Hello, you undergraduate illiterate students that can't read my essay on plant anatomy as applied to systematics. For those of you that don't know, I'm your host, Nels R. Lurston, and I'm old as f**k. Wait, why did, why did you guys bleep that out? No, 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 Jane, I, I swear I didn't swear. I mean, I didn't swear. Ugh. First, you scallywags need to understand the importance of various techniques used to observe the features that allow us to identify and classify plants. First and foremost, the most common methods of observation are with the use of a hand lens or a dissecting microscope or your naked eye. Ah, I'm naked! Microscopes are important when observing plant anatomy. For example, from space, Madagascar and Indonesia look fairly similar. That is, mostly blue and green. However, if you look closer in person, they have completely different environments in which most species and land masses are different. This is the same in plants. You can only see so much with the naked eye, but when you zoom way in, we find more and more clues that indicate the natural grouping and true identification of plants. A normal microscope ranges from 20 to 1,000 times. That's a lot of times. And if that wasn't enough, in the mid-20th century, the transmission electron scope was born. This microscope has a range of magnification of 1,000 times to 100,000 times. Although that mean, may seem like a great thing for viewing plant anatomy, it's just too darn advanced. That's like trying to learn calculus from Dr. Cusin. He's just too smart. In the last 30 years, the Scanning Electron Microscope, or SEM, came about. The SEM creates an image that is great in resolution and has a large depth of focus. Let me tell you, it gives a great view of pollen grains, seeds, and trichomes. It's kind of like Claritin Clear for your microscope lens. Now that you know all about microscopes and what we use to look at stuff, we need some stuff to look at. For your consideration. Today is the day we learn how to get plant specimens, and it's going to happen again and again. It involves cutting and sectioning fresh, preserved, or even dried plant organs. I can stain specimens to better view its anatomy. I can even proceed to chemically remove parts to isolate and reveal empty cells. Most commonly, pieces of plant organs are processed into a wax and then thinly sliced using a steel or glass knife. Mm. This knife is attached to a precision cutting device called a microtome. Once cut, the specimen is stained, dehydrated, and covered with a clear resin. Now you have your slide to view. These slides will allow me to view the arrangements of tissues and types of cells, whether it's from the roots, stems, leaves, or flower organs. I keep all of my slides. I like my slides. They're my trophies. Wasn't that adorable? Anyway, you all know what xylem is. What you don't know is what the xylem is constructed of. Inside are long, slender trach... trachids? Trachy... trach... Jane, how do you... how do you pronounce that? No, s seriously. Oh, trachids. Okay, thank you. Water moves between the tracheid cells only through bordered pits. More advanced dicots, however, have vessel elements. These are broader, shorter, and have real-life holes which are called perforation plates in their end walls. Let me tell you about phloem. You already know what it does, but how is it constructed? Oh, with CF cells. Okay, you already know that, but do you know how phloem and xylem are arranged? Oh gosh, by protosteel and siphonosteel tubes. You guys are good. Well here, I'll show you how to remember. Picture this is the protosteel. This is a rigid xylem structure in the middle of vascular plants. And this is the phloem that is arranged around the xylem used for vasculation. As for the toilet paper roll, don't ask how I got it.
No! There are more types of vascular cells. For example, the eustiel, which has this type of arrangement. Look at the little dinosaur eggs in there. And the atactosteel, which have many bundles used for transporting nutrients. Even smaller dinosaur eggs. Those are called nodal plexus. For your consideration. Today is the day where I distinguish anatomical characters from their families. Let's take a look at the order of legumes. The papillionoid legumes from the family Fabaceae have an interesting seed character different from all others. Legumes contain a hilum, which is a scar left where the seed was attached to its carpal wall. In the Fabaceae family, there's a horizontal cylinder of tra tra tracheid-like cells. <sighs> These cells are oriented perpendicular to the hilum surface. This is absent from all other two families in its order. Kind of like my family, the Morgans. We're just different. However, we cannot assume that finding a unique characteristic is always isolated to one family. There may be a unique difference in one family among a specific order that the other families don't have. But, that does not mean that unique characteristic, such as the tracheid-like cells in the Fabaceae family, doesn't exist in other orders altogether. This emphasizes the importance of having many sample sizes in order to make new observations and change prevailing ideas. With that being said, leave me be to my dissecting. The lagoon family has distinguishable dots on their leaves that are commonly found as anatomical features. These dots are internal oil cavities that have, for the most part, evolved convergently. This means that they may not be as closely related as we once had thought. Let's talk about latex. It's okay, it's for college students. Latex comes from latissifers. A special tribe that has latissifers are called lactusiae. Their latissifers are so different from any other tribe's latissifers that they have been found to be a separate family. Latex, yeah. We'll talk about it more in our plant education, sex education video next month. Bamboo is cool. Well, this is actually a European larch. This isn't bamboo. but. Bamboo was once used as ski poles, fencing, and many types of architecture. Anyway, it has these fusoid cells that are laterally elongated along the side of leaf veins. That function is unknown, but golly, that bamboo, it's tough. For your consideration. If finding differences among families wasn't hard enough, distinct characters at the genus or species level is even more difficult. Differences are in a matter of degrees, thus, statistical methods are often applied. It is of considerable economic importance to be able to make such distinctions. For example, identifying species from partially digested bits of plant material is important when studying food habits of birds and other animals. It is proved to be important in cases of suspected poisoning of both animals and people. Despite discoveries like this, I've always found ways to work around this system. Thanks for tuning in! No, seriously, um, yeah, thanks, it was kind of embarrassing, but whatever, videos are cool, right? Go science!